Let's talk about Scrivener. Hello, my writerly friends. I'm Victoria, author and editor. I've been using Scrivener for about 10 years, and I love it more every day. It is a fantastic tool for writers, especially those working on longer projects. It has so many options to help you organize your writing and your research to keep everything in one place. Plus, there are so many built-in tools that really make the writing process easier, simpler, and more fun. I am a huge fan of Scrivener, and in this video, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to walk you through how I organize my writing projects. I'm going to show you some of my favorite features of Scrivener, and I'm going to dive into a few of the areas of Scrivener that you'll want to explore, especially if you're not all that familiar with the software. A lot of people are intimidated by Scrivener because you open it up and there are so many things, but you don't have to do everything at once. Explore, keep learning. Like I said, I've been using it for 10 years and I'm still learning. That's part of the fun. And one of the fantastic things that I always brag about with Scrivener is that it is so flexible and it is so easy to adapt your process for each project when you're using Scrivener. Because each project we work on, each book we write, it's a little bit different and our process has to be a little varied. Scrivener allows for these unique differences. So without further ado, let's hop over to my screen. Okay, welcome to my Scrivener project. I am just going to flow through some of the features that I really enjoy using. Um, this is an older project. Um, it's actually on submission right now, but this is an older version. The last few rounds of revisions happened in Word, so um, I don't even recognize a lot of this. Right off the bat, one of the things that I love about Scrivener, and specifically Scrivener 3, is the ability to make these awesome timelines on the corkboard. So um, if you view Scrivener, you may be familiar with the standard corkboard, which just looks like this. Um, it's kind of the idea of having an actual physical corkboard and putting your scenes or your chapters on index cards and physically moving them around, which I also do. But uh, doing this, you can move these around and it will actually um, move the text around within your project. If you want to work in a freeform method, you can do that as well, um, and it won't be quite as structured. You can move them around wherever you want. But for this project, since I had two separate timelines, I had a past timeline and a present timeline that uh, kind of alternated throughout the story, I love being able to view it visually like this. So you can actually see the green is the present timeline and the blue is the past timeline and I can get an idea of how those timelines are um, interweaving as you know this, the reader is moving through the plot um, and it's just very visual, very easy to grasp. And you can also set it so that here on the left, um, in the binder, you have the same colors visible. So again, very visual, very easy to see and just quickly grasp the overall structure of your work. So you see here that um, in this is a chapter and within the chapter I have two scenes and they are broken down into index cards as well with the title and then a short description of the scene. And then when you expand that over here in the binder, um, that's where you have the actual text. So right here we have the first scene and then the second scene. And if you go back to the um, corkboard and move them, you see that they actually flipped over here. So again, moving around these uh, index cards actually moves around the text, which is very, very nice, especially when you're doing big structural revisions. Now you can expand all this out or you can condense it up and make it all nice and pretty over there on the left. Now, as far as the actual visual effects of the uh, timeline and the corkboard, you have all kinds of options. 
So you can do it uh, horizontally like this. You can change it so that it is vertical if your brain works better like that. Um, you have more options down here on the right. You can change the size of the index cards, um, the ratio of the index cards. And you see here that um, I have enabled the stamps here for my status for each chapter. So whether it's revised, in progress, to do, um, and you can customize that based on the types of labels that you use. Um, you can enable that, you can disable that, you can turn these colors off. Uh, you can really change up the visuals in any way you want. You can change the background, all kinds of options. And speaking of visuals, let's just go ahead and talk about the overall look of Scrivener. Um, of course, Scrivener 3 looks a little bit different. It's a little more streamlined, a little bit cleaner, and I really like that. Um, but you can also change up the color scheme. You see, I have it in dark mode. I really appreciate the dark mode. It's a lot easier on my eyes, but you have a couple more options. So if you just go up here and go to Scrivener, Appearances, um, and you have dark and light here. And then when you go into themes, you actually have um, several different themes. So you have two options for dark themes and two options for light themes. So I'm just gonna flip through and show you what all those look like. Um, so this is A Midsummer's Night. Um, this is Purple Haze. You can see that's a pretty drastic difference. So um, it's really going to depend on your screen, what you're comfortable with. Personally, this would hurt my eyes, but everybody is different. Um, solarized dark. So this is the second dark theme. And then here is solarized light. Again, very different. So I'm going to take it back to A Midsummer Night. Now, if you want, you can also change up individual uh, parts within these themes. If you go to Preferences and um, come over here to Appearance, you can change the appearance of pretty much anything. If you play around with this, you can get it looking exactly how you want it to look. And of course, many of us, when we're working, like to come over here to view and hop into composition mode, which really removes all those distractions. Nothing but you and the words. And uh, you can access some quick things down here on the bottom. Um, of course, you can change up the background fade. You can change the background. You can adjust this uh, to your liking. While we're over here, let's go ahead and talk about the binder for a moment. The binder is this whole section right here on the left. It is very, very nice when you are trying to stay organized. I find it so useful for pre-writing, drafting, revision, the whole shebang, because everything is right here where you need it. Um, you can see here I have all my chapters in folders. And then here I have information about my characters, which are organized by household. And then up here I have some information that I was using for the revision process, my timeline, my story Bible, just some general notes. And um, down here I have, this is actually an old version of the manuscript, just for reference. And so I could see what I was changing and keep an eye on um, some of the plot information. And then right here are some of my pre-writing. So I have brainstorming, um, I have some background information, and uh, there's some research thrown in here somewhere. Here we go. This is research specifically for the rewrite. Um, so random things that I was looking up and saving because I knew I would need to come back to them. So one of the things that I just love about Scrivener is that this whole thing right here, all that stuff that I just ran through, if you were using Word, you would have a different Word file for 
each and every one of those things. And then you're trying to keep them in folders or just scattered on your desktop. And it's a mess. We've all been there and it's an absolute mess. I adore having the organization of Scrivener. Um, it, it makes the entire process so much simpler. Another thing that is new to Scrivener 3 and that I really like and find myself using quite a bit is the project search. So we could always search over here in the binder and that works, but it's a little bit clunky because, okay, you searched and you see that the word Brooklyn appears in all of these chapters and scenes. But then if you wanna get more specific, uh, if you're looking for one certain instance, you have to actually go into them and check one by one. But with the project search up here, you can click, type your search term, and then um, you see, okay, here's the titles. And then down here, we have some actual previews of the text. Again, when you're looking for something specific, this is really, really helpful because you can skim this and say, oh, this is the one I'm looking for. And then if you want to go in the full project search, it will take you over here on the left. Also up here where we did the search, um, you see we have nice little quick view of our project targets. So this on the left is our overall word count um, compared to our target word count. You see it was a little bit high here. I uh, cut it down some in subsequent revisions. Um, and then over here we have our session word count. So zero out of a thousand, of course, I have not been working on this today. And then over here on the right, we have our um, daily word count. And you see this blue line at the top, this represents the overall word count um, compared to the target. And then there would be a line at the bottom showing the daily word count. So to go ahead and show you that, you just make something new here and I'm just going to copy some words over. And now you see 657 words and uh, here's the bar showing how close we are to reaching that thousand word mark. And of course, if you want more detail, we have the beloved Project Targets shortcut. So we're going to go into Targets and here we are. We have the basically the same information that you see right there. So again, you see the word count, the target word count, session and target. Um, you can change those in the options, all kinds of stuff. And then if you want even more detail, you can go to project statistics. It's going to take a second to load because it's getting you all kinds of information about your project. And we have it set to accurate down here. If you want this information faster, um, you'll sacrifice a little bit of accuracy, but Scrivener does give you the option to change that. So you can go right here and go to estimate. So we have words, characters, paragraphs, sentences, so many things, uh, actual reading time right here, which can be really helpful, um, especially if you're using Scrivener for something other than novel writing, like blog posts, and you want to put the reading time um, at the top of your blog post, that could be very useful. Word frequency, which is an interesting one. Um, a few words that pop up more than others. Grave comes up 12 times. Well, now you know what I write about. Um, this can be really, really interesting and can help you identify words that you are overusing, especially if they are, okay, so beside comes up 55 times, but beside is a common word that is not obtrusive and you're probably not going to replace that with something. Um, on the other hand, if seeped had come up 55 times, I may want to replace some of those instances with something else. So that can be um, a very useful tool. Along with the project statistics here, you can also get the stats for just the selected documents. So that would be just this scene. 
And then of course, we have more options so that you can customize this to your liking. For all the multitaskers in the room, we have long been able to split the windows in Scrivener, as well as open separate quick view windows. But with Scrivener 3, we have something called copy holders that takes multitasking to the next level. So let's say we want to be working with multiple documents at one time, whether it's multiple scenes or a scene and research or two scenes and research, we can now open up to four documents in this one editor. So along with this editor, you can also open quick view documents. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to view and then we're going to go down to editor layout. And the first thing you're going to want to do is split either horizontally or vertically. I'm going to split horizontally. So now we have this on the top and let's open another scene on the bottom. So now we have two scenes open. Now let's say we want to open some research. So I'm going to come down here to my research. I'm going to find whatever I'm interested in and then I'm going to click open and I'm going to open it in copy holder. Now I have three windows open here. So this on the right is actually a um, web page that I have imported directly into Scrivener, which is a fantastic tool and is super easy. Um, if you want to do that, all you have to do if you want to import um, a web page, all you do is choose your folder and then come down here and click on the gear icon. I'm going to click add web page. Add your URL and then click OK and it's going to import that for you. So now here it is, we've added the web page and I'm going to come down here to the bottom editor and I'm going to open this web page in copy holder. So now I have four things open at the same time. We have all the multitasking options right now. And if this is not enough, if you need more, you can click on any of these and you can open as quick reference. Look at that, you have so many options. I love having all of these flexible ways to write and utilize my research as I'm writing. And of course, this is also great um, to have your pre-writing open, to have your story Bibles open, um, even your character images, inspiration images, anything that is going to help you as you are drafting, revising, because you can do it all in Scrivener. Um, I hate moving out of Scrivener at this point because it is so easy and intuitive and I'm so much more comfortable working in Scrivener. So I try to keep my projects in Scrivener as long as I can. So I'm going to close some of this out and just hop right back to the single scene in the editor here. Another thing that is really useful, um, especially with the research side, the pre-writing side, um, are Scrivener links. And they are exactly what they sound like. You can link to different Scrivener files. So um, I believe if I'm not mistaken that I have done so, yes, here in my um, character profiles, I have a link to different characters who have different relationships to each other. So this is very, very easy. Um, all you do is highlight whatever you want the link text to be. And then you're going to right click, go to link to document and pick your document. It can be to uh, whatever you want. And then it'll open right up for you.
super easy. Um, you can also link to outside sources, to files, to uh, web pages, to pretty much anything. This is also really fun um, if you're writing hyperfiction. And if you've never played with hyperfiction, I certainly recommend it, um, if only for fun. Hyperfiction involves using hyperlinks in the fiction uh, to either link to outside sources or to move around within the story. Okay, another new feature that is extremely fun to play with and can also be really, really useful um, is the linguistics focus. Now, now I'm just going to show you this one. So if you come up here to edit, and then we're going to go down to writing tools, and click on linguistic focus. So have you ever wanted to isolate something like dialogue? So you could just focus on making sure the character's voices are consistent. I know I have, and I have often wished for something to help me do that, which is why I was so excited when Scrivener 3 came out and this linguistic focus was included. So all you have to do, let's say you want to isolate dialogue, click on direct speech, and there it is. It's isolated. Now you can see just the dialogue. You can fade out the other text as little or as much as you want. You can make it completely go away. You can also isolate different parts of speech. So noun, pronouns. Um, this is one that folks use a lot, adverbs. That's a really good way to uh, check your adverbs and make sure you're not overusing them. This is just so easy to use and it's a really great tool to check yourself and to evaluate yourself uh, when you're at that line editing stage and you're trying to make sure that your prose is consistent and concise and all of those good things. Um, and it's a tool that is not much use by itself. You have to have the knowledge to go with it, but basically it just highlights the areas that you may need to evaluate for whatever element, for consistency, concision, correctness, whatever the case may be. So it can be very useful, but as I said, um, it's not by any means something that is a, a quick and easy check. It's not like a spell checker. It's, it's just going to bring things to your attention. So I really love that. And another fun tool is the name generator. Um, I love that that is integrated. It's built right in. I know I am all the time stopping. Um, I'm introducing a character, especially if it's just a minor character and I need a name. They can be really tough to come up with. Um, so if that happens, all you have to do is pop up here to the name generator, tell it, what gender you want. Um, you can give it options like alliteration. And then you can come down here and choose what types of names to include and set your obscurity level. I love that. And then just generate names. And there we go. It's right there. You can also set the forename or the surname. So if you know one or the other and you're looking for um, a name to go with it, then you can kind of see how it's going to look with the name you have already chosen, which super useful and just makes it really easy. One of the things that I hear people say about Scrivener is that it's just too complicated. It's too complicated and they couldn't figure it out and it was just easier to continue using their word processor. And while I understand that and understand that it can look and feel overwhelming, once you get the hang of it, it makes things so much simpler. It just really streamlines the process of all of those things that are related to writing that we need to do in order to get to the actual act of putting words on the page. And that is amazing, amazing to me. I would never want to give that up. 
So these are a few of my absolute favorite features in Scrivener, and you see that several of them are new in Scrivener 3, so I love that they are constantly improving. Um, Scrivener 3 is a paid upgrade, but if you have been using previous versions of Scrivener, you get it for a discounted price. Scrivener 3 is currently only available on Mac, but if you purchase Scrivener 2 for PC right now, you will get Scrivener 3 for PC for free when it is available. So again, those are some of my favorite features. I think my my number one favorite feature is the option to arrange by label, which for this is timeline. Um, you could also use this for arranging by point of view character. If you have multiple POV characters, you could use this to arrange it by setting all kinds of stuff. And this is something that I have wanted for a really long time. And I have wondered why there wasn't something like that um, since it's a tactic that writers have used on using physical index cards for a long time. So when it came out with Scrivener 3, I was very excited and continue to be very excited. Um, I've used this for two projects since this one, since I finished working with Left at the Sycamore. So yeah, that's probably my favorite. All right, folks, I guess that's enough Scrivener for today. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you got a ton out of this video. If you have any questions about Scrivener or about writing, leave a comment. Also, let me know if you're a Scrivener user. Do you love it? Uh, what features did I leave off that you could not live without? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see y'all next time.